I want to walk my dogs. I'm developing a nice dog walking service. I am a proud business owner. How, how dare you? How dare you? <laughs> Don't get in the way of my business. <laughs> oh, which is vengeance. What do you name? I guess I have to hope that I hit flicker spell. Hello everyone, welcome back from Top of the Wall. My name is Mason Up, and I have another deck for you today. And this one I didn't build. Uh, this is another pre-con uh, from the New Player Modern Leagues that I've been enjoying. Um, the New Player Modern Leagues are something that you enter with the new player points um, that you get when you uh, establish an account or you get them from uh, prizes or from various events, uh, someone told me last time. Uh, this is a pre-constructed only league. So when you enter the league, you randomly get one of six decks, uh, either the mono white blink slash death and taxes deck, uh, or you get the just guy control like I had last time, you get the mono red burn, you get is it storm, uh, Demir Mill or uh, Grohl Titan Shift or Titanscape? Titan Shift? Both. Why not both? Sure. And so what this one is, this is the kind of like mono white death and taxes plus good stuff blink fused together into one modern deck. All of the decks are kind of uh, a little bit watered down, but relatively balanced it seems like. Uh, it seems like there's kind of like some rock, paper, scissors stuff going on. Uh, I'm, I'm actually kind of fine uh, with rock, paper, scissors to some degree. Now, uh, don't get me wrong, there are some mirror matchups and whatnot, and there are some some different uh, parts of the gameplay that are either that are rather intricate and skill based and whatnot. So, starting off, this is an aether vial deck. We are planning to play an aether vial in here and use that to put in to play some of our creatures to get around like things like counterspell and to accelerate us because essentially we're cheating our mana cost. We're not paying for the creatures that we're just putting into play with Aether Vial. Uh, and because we're an Aether Vial deck, we obviously need a ton of creatures. We need tons of creatures. We need great creatures. Starting off with is, starting off the bottom of the curve is a great card from, uh, from Pauper. One that you all know and love in many different decks. Thraben Inspector. Good old Thraben Inspector that makes a clue token. Uh, and then we have one that we definitely don't have, but we really, really should have in Pauper. I I feel like there's a good argument for having an actual Thalia in Pauper. I, mm, I know that we can't, but we should have a Thalia in Pauper. Uh, or if not that Thalia, then... What about uh, a selfless spirit as a uh, wrath spell protection uh, creature? Uh, we could sack this and give all of our creatures indestructible in the end of the turn. Uh, we also have remorse, remorseful cleric, which is similar, but instead it exiles all of the uh, cards in the graveyards. Uh, we have charming prince, which is a great creature to put into this deck. Um, it is a it's just a bear, just a bear, nothing else, except when it enters, we get to scry too, maybe. Or we can choose to gain three life, or we can choose to flicker something until uh, the end of our turn. Uh, then moving to the three drops, we have uh, the other Thalia, the newer one from uh, Eldridge Moon. Uh, she is a slightly thicker Thalia, uh, and instead of taxing our opponents by making their spells cost more, uh, we have our opponent's creatures and non-basic lands enter the battlefield tapped, uh, which is another way of taxing them it's not quite as good but still she's a nice beater and a nice way to round out the curve flicker wisp uh is a amazing flicker creature all the way back from larwin is i think i think this thing was printed in larwin yeah like way back in the day you can tell because of how weird it looks and creepy it looks for an elemental uh then we got blade splicer which makes a 3-3 golem from a uh, new phyrexia and she gives all the golems a uh, first strike. She's one of the things that we really would like to flicker uh, in this deck over and over again. Because if we can just start making, like, a bunch of 3-3s. Three or have, let's say, Flicker Wisp enter, put 3 power on board, and then put another 3 power on board, board with first strike. So, 3 flying in the air, 3 first strike on the ground. If we could flicker more of them, uh, we can do the same thing, you know, to get some value with uh, Charming Prince. And at the top of our curve is Restoration Angel... For four mana, she is the last of our flicker creatures. 
and she uh she's also hopefully going to be bouncing blade splicer or if our opponent tries to blow up one of our creatures or whatnot we can use some of our flicker creatures uh sometimes at instant speed with our aether vial to sort of flicker them and exile them out of the way of the removal and bring them back down so that's one way for us to get a little bit of card advantage uh, just by using the uh, flicker something out of the way trick. Um, the mana base. Oh, wait, hold on. No, wait. We have we have non-creature spells. I forgot. Four Path to Exile, a staple of modern, if you're not familiar with modern. And then we got uh, four Snow-Covered Plains, four Field of Runes, which... Ooh, new art. I did not realize that this art existed. Admiring, admire, and unadmiring. Uh, this one, it blows up one of your opponent's non-basics, and then you and your opponent both get to search for another land. It's um, kind of a better version of of Ghost Quarter, I think. I think it's a better version, a more fair version of Ghost Quarter that's also a little bit better. Uh, then we have Castle, which can protect Thalia to some degree uh, from getting, you know, uh, beaten to death out of the game. We don't really have any other uh, legendary creatures besides our Thalias. But, you know, just some incidental ways to get, like, a little bit of value. And this this land does come into play untapped. It's a fine one of in uh, the mana base. There's no downside uh, to really playing this. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with uh, playing this. This is a fine include. I like it when uh, people try to do something extra with the mana base uh, when they're able to. Now, for the sideboard... And adjusting face cam. Haven't been on tapped out in a while. Little, little weirded out uh, by that. The Edelon of Rhetoric is against. It's good against the. Is it Storm deck? Um, we can force them to not be able to uh, play more than one spell per turn. Uh, Gideon Ally of Zendikar is good against some of the longer games. Uh, some of the matchups where maybe our opponent isn't planning on interacting with us, but maybe they're planning on going for like a longer game. Um, I would side this in against Prime Time. I would side this in against uh, Prime Titanscape, Titan Shift. I'm c call it Prime Time. Pr we'll call it Prime Time. Uh, I'd side this in against Prime Time and Control. Uh, Kitchen Sphinx is for that mono red burn deck. Uh, on Ice is for anything where we really want to remove the creatures. Like um, I would actually probably board this in against the Is It Storm deck. Because their creatures are really, really, really valuable, and they do not care about blocking. They are relatively fast. I haven't seen the Is It Storm deck, and hopefully I don't have to. Uh, but if it's anything like the normal modern Storm deck, it should be really fast. They're playing 12 cantrips. You can tell that they're pretty watered down, but, you know, after game one, when they're able to sideboard in Empty the Warrens, that won't be so much of a problem. They just need to string a couple cantrips and a couple rituals together, um, potentially on turn two or three, and then empty the warrens for four or five, and then it's like, oh, good, we're dead <laughs> from a bajillion one ones. Uh, so getting rid of uh, potentially their annoying uh, elect goblin electromancer, yes, or brawl is perfectly fine. Uh, Phyrexian Revoker is great against other Planeswalkers. Uh, we can use Relic of Progenitus to get rid of the Graveyards. Uh, Spirit of the Labyrinth is good against some of the decks that are trying to go crazy with the card draw. Like, for instance, the Demir Mill deck. They have a cantrip. Yes, that cantrip. That can draw them three cards for one blue mana. But there is a stipulation of 20 cards in the Graveyard. God, I am really hoping that I get paired up against... Like, Mono Red Burn. I think Mono Red Burn, I think we're going to have a fine game against them. We have a couple instances of life gain in the deck and some taxing stuff, so that will slow them down and our creatures outclass theirs. So if the game goes longer against them, we just kind of outclass and overwhelm them, which I would like. Fingers crossed. Seems good. Um, I think that this is not necessarily the best deck against the Demir Mill deck. Um, it seems like we want to put in a lot of permanents, and it seems like we want to use a lot of our permanents to tap. So when they're using Mesmeric Orb, that might be uh, a rather big downfall for us. Um, the prime, the uh, like primeval, uh, you know, just I'm just gonna call it prime time. Prime time is the name that sticks with me in my head, and I'm trying not to use it. 
the the prime time deck i really uh think that we might be favored in that match because they don't seem to have like a lot of early plays that involve blocking or having good blockers so yeah throwing out down some blade splicers and making an army of three threes and getting in seems good seems like a legit plan uh for the jeskai control deck i don't think it's going to be too great for us they have uh two wrath spells in the main and two in the side and a endless amounts of spot removal uh they can gain card advantage pretty decently i don't think that we're super favored for that i mean if we get down maybe a thalia and back it up with like some flicker wisps or you know we're maybe able to get down that for turn one aether vial turn two thalia um and start like protecting things immediately maybe but otherwise i don't uh i don't see it happening now without further ado let's get into some gameplay all right and we have our first opponent and it is chippo tudo chippo tudo chippo tudo that's the name nailed it uh we have charming prince it's a very versatile card and we got two of it um a little bit of interaction i don't know if this is great depending on the matchup this could be very good or very like meh uh i'll i'll keep it only because we get double scry i'm gonna stay high how you doing Oh, it's Demir Mill. Uh, yeah, they're the only ones that play Dark Slick Sword. Oh, hey, Hedron Crab. I am I am going to Path to Exile you. I think I will Path to Exile on turn one. I have a turn one play. Isn't that nice? And I have a turn two Thalia. That seems even better. Um, or maybe I want to Scry first, and maybe they'll shoot the Prince down. Uh, let me just go ahead and look up their deck list real quick. I have it in the side over here on my second screen. I will immediately shoot that. They don't have counter spells, but I don't want them to untap and play fetch land and immediately get the chance to mill us. Because they do get that, uh, they do get priority. Um, I, I don't want them to, you know, have access to that. They they do have one of the best tutors in... Is that a stuck on Tears Around Crab right there? Okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. Um, uh, okay, it can block uh, as long as they have four or more cards in hand. Okay, they have three cards in hand. That's good. Um, now I think that they're gonna actually try to start playing their uh, their bigger spells. I'll play Charming Prince, and it can't attack unless we have a bunch of cards in our graveyard. Okay, um, I'm gonna play out the Charming Prince. Um, I don't know what they would cast next. It might be wise to Thali here because that would slow them down the most. Yeah, I'll play Thalia. I'll pass the turn. Seems perfectly fine. Uh, they only have six targeted removal spells in their main, so there's a very small chance that they actually have it. Uh, technically, they have Virtual Nine with Scheming Symmetry. And with Mission Briefing, if they do mill over one of them, I guess it's good enough. Oh, they have the Fatal Push. Okay, they do have Fatal. They do have Fatal. Okay, that's fine. Fine. Well, I'm going to Charming Prince. I'm going to choose to Scry. Ooh, my first Prince. How charming. They're taking their time to read his three different things that he can do. The Cryptic Command of Creatures. Well, technically, Aetherling, I guess, is the cryptic command of creatures. <laughs> I just thought... Okay. Hmm, what? What's taking so long? You tried to get uh, his phone number? 
Uh, we will scry. I really want to scry. Ooh, Flicker Wisp and uh, Thalia Hardico Cathar. I'll, I think I'll put Thalia on top, Flicker Wisp on top. I think I'd prefer it like this, and then we'll pass the turn. Uh, the reason why I want Flicker Wisp on top is because I can at least get that extra scry uh, next turn. There might be a tiny, you know, there might be a chance that they mill me, and that negates my scry. But in the meantime, I will be beating down. I know Relic of Progenitus will probably come in. Oh God, Manic Scribe. Okay, they got a uh, they got a really good hand. Okay, you play Manic Scribe, sure. All right, and that that blocks my uh, that blocks my tutu. Can't attack unless we have seven or more cards in our graveyard. Yeah, that's a good reason to have relic. Um, and it has flying. Haha. -ha. Mm hmm. You don't say now. What did you mill over? Okay, yeah. Uh, the two creatures that we saw in a land. Well, I think I'd like to Aether Vial. And, um... Do I just put in a Resto? I think, I think I put in a Resto on their end step. Yeah. I'll put in a Resto. That way I can get another Scry with the Prince. I mean, playing another Prince here, it only gets me a Scry or a life gain. But if I resto, then I at least get to, for sure, get to keep whatever I scry on my turn. If I scry on my turn, um, yeah, if I scry on my turn, then they would have done that. Please, now I can uh, get a chance to see, I mean, get a chance to see cards and then get to choose to keep them. My scry would be virtually worthless. They could uh, negate it by just playing uh one of these uh one of the lands okay yeah hedron crab sure how do i how do i do it there it is perfect oh charming prince and a thraben inspector sure 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 and you're gonna hit me for five now mesmeric orb Okay. Well, that Manic Scribe is about to be very active in a second. They're probably going to end up milling over Delirium themselves. I play Restoration Angel. Um, yes. Yes. I would like to scry too. Um Okay, I'm going to I'm going to choose to put this on top. Oh wait, yeah, no, met rest rate. Uh okay, yeah, no that doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Yep. Um with the mesmeric orb. Yeah, it doesn't matter anyway. I should just be gaining the life there. All right. Um, sure. Sure. I let them resolve. Um, I'm going to yield to these. Always. Um, yeah, I can turn off the auto guilds. All right. Good. Good. I'm auto yielding. Good. Bud. <laughs> God, double fatal push. All right. All right, um, so here is our turn. I will play an Aether Vial. At least we have a relatively fast clock. Um, 
I'm not going to tap mana for this Charming Prince. Instead, I'm going to just play it off of the Aether Vial. Um, yeah, I'm willing to mill over four cards to play this Restoration Angel. I'll get in for attacks. You can't block still. Sure, good, good. I wonder what zero drops you can actually put into play with this thing. Yeah, you mill us a card. Ah, oh, Blade Splicer. No! I want that. Do you have Delirium now? Oh, uh, land, instant. Oh, okay, no, no, they don't. They do not yet. They don't have Delirium. Um, yes, I would like to use this ability. The reason why I want to flicker this is because it'll become untapped. And this says whenever a permanent untaps. However, this is not untapping. It's just forgetting that it's in a state of being tapped. When it leaves, uh, when it changes the zone, it forgets all of its states. So it forgets, uh counters it forgets um it forgets whether it's tapped or not it forgets whether it's been exerted it, it forgets everything so that means this thing just comes back or actually does not my bad oh yeah that's right um beginning of the next down step Oh yeah, we both get triggers. Sure. Uh, field the room. Ble well, we got rid of some land. Thank God. <laughs> My field of rune can beat your field of rune. <laughs> Alright, come on. What do you mill me for? Don't leave me in suspense. <laughs> what card is it? Is it a... Uh, land? Is it a... Uh, Non-land? Oh, I wanted that. How many uh, paths do we have? I would... Yes, I would like to put a counter on. One... Okay, good. Thalia's there. One, um... Two... Three, four... Ah, uh, all of our paths? Okay. So, path is no longer an out. Um... We might want to play Thalia. Well, I'll get in for an attack first. Thalia is something that I'm willing to mill some cards over for. Because Thalia will slow them down enough where they cannot both glimpse of the unthinkable me and mesmeric orb me. Alright, yeah, you mill me, okay. Oh, my last Thalia. Wait, is it? One. Uh, nope, not it. Um, we'll bounce this one. Please. Yes. Um, yes. Flicker training against go. It'll come back on their, uh, step. I'll choose to use their ability on this guy and just gain the life. Yep, there's Visions of Beyond. Ah, uh, yep. You draw three cards there. Seems mighty good. Yep. Do they give this deck fetch lands? They give it a field of rune. Four polluted deltas. Oh, only... Only a few of them. So, just basically seven fetches if you include the three field of runes ah eh. uh, that sucks that they milled a flicker wisp all right glimpse of the unthinkable all right that's real close oh that's real close okay yep uh just target thalia nope 
I don't think that the life gain matters here. <laughs> there, I put it on the stack. Oh, good God. Um, Manic Scribe builds me for three. Okay. One, two. Uh, yes. Thraben Inspector? Hmm, I think I'm going to be dead. <laughs> I don't think I have time for Thraben Inspector. We will go ahead and punch it. Oh, you can block now, huh? Oh, okay, yeah, no, that seems... Yeah, no, we we definitely lose here. Um, they just need... Um, we're, we're dead to any land, I think. Plus, uh... I mean, they can start blocking our creatures, effectively. We're dead to basically just some land drops or one of their target removal spells. That that kind of sucks. Um, I really want the Relic of Progenitus just to stop the Visions of Beyond. Because that is probably their strongest card. It's, it's an Ancestral Recall midway through the game. Uh, Gideon seems fine for smashing in. Um difficult to deal with uh Edelon of Reddick they don't play that many spells on per turn I, this is pretty much just for storm um spirit of the labyrinth might be deep they're not it's only a four of so whatevs but their creatures are really valuable so um on thin ice seems better than the relics seems better than the relics uh, let's see, they have Witch's Vengeance, Crypt Incursion, Bantu's Last Reckoning. Wh which one was uh, Witch's Vengeance? Creatures of the creature type of your choice get minus three, minus three. Uh, yeah, no, that, that, may, that would make sense to bring in. It, it would at least get like a two for one, I think. Uh, because Thalia is human, Thraven Inspectors are human, Charming Prince is a human. Uh, a lot of the creatures here are humans. Um, you know, we don't we don't really need the relic too much. We do have remorseful cleric. Um, Bantu's last reckoning is a problem. Uh, set a drift, maybe. And let's see that expropriate. That was just a uh, yeah. That's a combo piece leader. Um, it just deletes a combo piece from the yard. Anyway, I'll I'll check out some of these uh, other cards in here. Like, we can get rid of something. <laughs> I think I would like a... Oh, actually, some Charming Princes seem just fine for deletion. They seem ripe for deletion. Um, same thing with maybe one resto. A little thick. Um, she a thick girl. Uh, yeah, we'll submit it like this. The reason why I'm bringing in these on, on thin ices is because the creatures are decently high value targets that I would really like to shoot. And three field of runes. Oh, goody, goody. Huh. I think I need to mulligan this for lack of white mana in a mono white deck. Wow. <laughs> I'll take these because if I. Oh, yeah, I, I think I'll take these. I'll keep this. I'll chuck out... Oh, God. I, I need land. <laughs> I need land. I'll get rid of Resto because it's the furthest from what I can actually do. Um, we'll play this. I would like to Anthonize their first creature. Anthonize their second creature. Oh god, they have Field of Runes just floating around. That That is a little annoying. And I don't like that. I just gotta make sure I don't double stack the same land. Hello, Field of Rune. I think I'll, uh, on thin ice. There. Yeah. And then we'll... Field of Rune. Pass. I don't think that we can mana screw them. Considering they have both kinds of basics in their deck, they can... Oh, yeah, there's that fetch land. That was going to be an easy six cards. Uh, plus uh, three more for each of their land drops. So, like, 12 cards for one 
Blue mana? Yeah. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, thank you. Uh, scribe. Manic scribe, sure. That's great. I'll, I'll enchant this one. Yeah. Uh, I'll also put in one remorseful cleric. I'm leaving these in because it is an evasive threat. They do have some good blockers. Now I can start beating in. Manic scribe. All right. Yeah, these, these are actually pretty much the meat of their deck. Um, they are not going to get a whole lot of use out of Archive Trap immediately. Ooh, yeah. We got spells. I think I'll attack. Excuse me. Coming in for punchies. Just making sure you're cool. Um, we can, it just says exile another permanent, right? Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll play the flicker wisp actually. Um, I'll play, I'll take this time to actually play Thalia. Uh, Thalia will slow them down, uh, a bit if they're playing any amount of non-basics and it will give me an extra turn before they can use, uh, field of rune. Because they're playing the three Field of Runes in their deck. Which, yeah, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that. They don't need that. That's unnecessary. That's just straight up wrong. Bantu's Last Reckoning? No! Okay, sure. I could have prevented that two damage. <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, that's a field rune. Okay. Uh, yep. Well, they're probably going to get back the Manic Scribe, right? They have three different cards. They cast an instant. That's good. Uh, I will... Well, they can't untap next turn. And they can't activate this yet. So I at least have one turn of... Playing a Blade Slicer. Knowing that it's probably safe. Fingers crossed. And next turn, getting in. Use Flisk Flicker Wisp to reuse Blade Slicer. Adding six power to the board. Okay. Okay, so that's another answer for another one of their annoying creatures. Great. Let's get in. Let's walk our dog. <laughs> you want to pet our dog? Look how good he is. He's so well trained. Yeah, that's right. You take that damage. <laughs> uh, undo that. Wait. I'll flicker wisp. Uh, we'll bounce the blade splicer. You are not going to fatal push in response, right? Oh, boy. Oh, okay, good. Tapped. 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 We present lethal. Good. Good. Don't do it. You can blow up one of these. It's fine. I'm fine with that. Just don't, don't use Witch's Vengeance. Actually, if you could set adrift something, can you please set adrift the Blade Splicer? That would be great. Otherwise, I might flicker it again. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> Glimpse the unthinkable. Well, okay. What'd you hit? Well, it's too late for Aether Vials. Oh, well. Uh, 
Gideon, Ally of Zendikars are gone. How many blades collections do we have left? Um, one in the deck. I tap that. Okay, they blow up this. I don't see why they wouldn't blow up. Oh yeah, it says non-basic. Right, got it. In that case, yeah, I can maybe see why Ghost Quarter might be a little bit, a little bit better. See, this works out fine. It, okay, Flicker Wisp, gone. <laughs> One card left. Visions Beyond. Yikes. No, it's okay. We can lose the mana. It's okay. We don't present lethal yet. But we do start... We can negate some of those cards. Nope. I want to... I want to get it. I want to walk my dogs. I'm developing a nice dog walking service. I am a proud business owner. How... How dare you? How dare you? Don't get in the way of my business. <laughs> oh, that's a pretty good, pretty good draw. Ancestral Recall <laughs> must be nice being in blue. <laughs> oh, which is Vengeance. What do you name? Oh, yeah, they name it as it resolves. Um, <sighs> um right. Yikes. Uh, I guess I have to hope that I hit Flicker Spell. I might want to feel the rune, get rid of their Water Grave just so I can thin my deck. Oh, hey, that's a good card. I'm down for that. Especially because we will very soon have 12 cards left in our yard. <laughs> Ooh, a hidden card. What does it do? Manic Scribe, hey, welcome back to the party, bud. I have some responses. First off, that. Second off, that. No. You're not allowed. Ah, uh, face... I'll take a snow-covered plains. Seems like a pretty good choice. Thraven Inspector, what a redraw. Um, we'll get in. I'm still presenting le lethal uh, by the end of this turn. And I will stop the first blocker and get a redraw. Ooh, I could crack this, potentially hit another Thraven Inspector. Um... Yeah, that has a realistic chance with only 26 cards left, and at least three of them are Thraven Inspectors. Nah, we'll we'll pass the turn. It's very slim. I'll uh I'd rather, you know, keep up three. Hedron Crab. Okay. You have priority. But uh <clears throat> not for long. You foiled my dog walking service, <laughs> but I came back with a vengeance. <laughs> um, God, I think I really do want Spirit of the Labyrinth here. Mm, it just it just really hurts that they can draw three cards for one. The Ancestral Recall just bites so much. Um, submit. Run it back. Run it back. It seemed it went well. Uh, the Charming Princes were just essentially bears last game. And they don't care to gain through beating down, typically. So, you know. Uh, the Gargoyles, not really. Their life gain didn't really matter. They didn't even try to attack with them. They knew what to do. Okay, so we have four lands. We have no interaction no
created step trigger. Only opponents. Uh, they begin with seven cards in hand. Yeah, okay. Um, I think I might have to mulligan this because it's really slow. I mean, don't get me wrong. These are some pretty good threats. And this is a pretty solid thing that I have going here. Plus the resolved Gideon doesn't seem half bad. I mean, he's indestructible, right? Yeah. Um, God, this could be really bad. Um, I'll keep it. God, I really hope I didn't just throw this game away. But hey, we can play Magic. And we do have a good number of one drops, so there's a good chance uh, with a bunch of one drops in the deck, like three, three, four Thraben Inspectors, four, uh, and we do have, okay, yeah, they found that card. Sure, we do have um, 15, yeah, no, this is, this is fine. Uh, we will play an Aether Vial on turn one. The first of hopefully many Aether Vials for the rest of the games that we play. Ooh, come on. Dark Six Source? Sure, sure. Uh, I will have to field over in that Shell Duck Isle. Sooner than later. Because later means a free card for one mana. I do not like that. God, Hideaway is really good. Okay, you're paying some cost. Mesmeric Orb. That's a pretty good pretty good card. I can see why you kept that. I put mine on the stack. Sure. Sure. Yes. Okay. Uh I do nothing. I wonder what they got with that. If it's, <laughs> you know, you always, I bet they're always probably like hoping that it's uh, Glimpse the Unthinkable or Archive Trap or something. Probably not, but. All right, so we got, oh, okay, Manic Scribe, sure. Do they only, uh, they kept, they kept a two lander? Sure. They don't have Delirium yet. All right, that's fine. Put it on the stack. Why do we have to put Aether Vials trigger on the stack? Shouldn't it just like automatically go onto the stack? There's, oh, well, you know what? They technically do have a thing that could trigger. So, um, I mean, it triggers on the untap step, but all untap step triggers normally go onto the stack during the upkeep. Um, I remember from Inspired, the Inspired mechanic in Theros. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll use the ability. I would like to put these into play for very, very cheap. I will, I will play a Field of Rune. I will put into play a Thalia. Um, you know, I, I'll actually put into play a Blade Splicer first. And then I'll put into play a Thalia. I know I could probably slow them down and screw them over with this Thalia, but uh, I really do want to apply a lot of pressure. I'll play... You know, I'll, um, I'll play Blade Splicer first. I, I'll, I'll keep going with the plan. Keep going with the plan. Do you draw land? Ooh, three card types in there? Okay. Glimpse the unthinkable. And that is not another card type. But that is a lot of cards. Oh man, you got took another Blade Splicer and a Path to Exile. Off my top two. 
Ah, uh, Flicker with spaghetti. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, no, I think they already had those. Uh, they had other ones. Oh, oh, they cleared away some lands. That's fine. Sure. Uh, we'll always yield. And yes. I think I'm going to have to uh, field a rune that in a little while. Um, but for now, I'll move to combat. Um, you know, I. Yeah, Gideon wouldn't have had haste. Because he was a permanent that just entered the battlefield this turn. We can make a knight. It just doesn't say human. So, witch's vengeance doesn't work out. Uh, we'll play Gideon. And we'll flick, flicker in Flicker Wisp on their end step. We'll... Zero. Neck, and we can use this Flicker Wisp to protect our Blade Splicer, rebuild our board if they try to Wrath. Ooh, Manic Scribe? Yeah, sure. No, no, go, go ahead, do that. That's fine. Uh, yes. I'd like to put uh, a bunch of power on board. Oh, yeah. I have to click the button. <laughs> I have to click the big shield here. I have to hit this. <laughs> the thing that has been in that same spot this entire time. Yes, that. <laughs> Do we really not have any artifact destruction? We got none. Oh, well. Yep, sure, sure, sure. Okay. Um, no. I would like to plus you. I would like to attack for a bunch. I do believe I'm presenting a two-turn clock right at this moment. Since they haven't been dealt damage yet. Yep, so that will survive... Uh, we'll play a field of rune, and I th I want to flash in a heretic Cathar and prevent them from Bantu's reckoning. Uh, in case they find that land, there's a good chance that they'll play it anyway. Then they're dead to Gideon if they try to play Bantu's reckoning. Um, I'm not gonna do anything. I don't, I don't need to do anything. I can just be conservative with my cards. I, I'm fine with where I'm at. It's unnecessary. Don't need to worry about it. So it's next turn. I can swing with Gideon again or Anthem and do a bunch of nuts stuff. I mean, if I, uh, if I Anthem Gideon, he's still alive. And they can't hit him. And my creature's get an extra five damage anyway it's as though he's still swinging and four of it's still in the air and some of it still comes around the side yeah that's fine that's fine uh, i'm gonna give them the ggs they i think they did as well as they could considering uh they just kind of got mana screwed here Ooh, they glimpsed the unthinkable me Um, yeah. Okay, that doesn't get me. They're, they're just shy. We live, right? By two, by one card? We live by one card. 
<laughs> we live by one card. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, actually, we die. Oh, no, we do die. No. Oh, dang it. Dang it. Ah, oh, we died. Oh, that's right. These, um, these stupid scribes. These stupid scribes got us. I forgot about them. All right. Oh, well. We were just shy. Uh, no. We were just shy. Oh, well. All right. That's, that's unfortunately how it goes. We were, we were just short. A little shy. We kept a slower hand. We paid for it. Uh, that was that was a shame. Uh, it's uh, we played well. We played well. It, it's fine. Um, we were just shy. Um, they they did get uh, a couple glimpses the unthinkables. That that's a pretty good draw for them. And Manx didn't do a half bad job either. Um, I didn't realize at the last second that the scribes were um, going to mill us for six. Either way, um, we didn't see interaction with them. We couldn't see a way to interact with them, which is unfortunate. So, uh, I mean, we could have Flicker Whisk, but I'm pretty sure that wouldn't have actually saved us. We were still dead by a card. I hope next time we get to go against Mono Red Burn or the Is It Storm deck. Uh, that's all for now. Don't forget to crack some clues, meddle with some mages, and name some spells. Coming in for that face touch.